rational inequalities with test points. We studied rational equations previously, and you'll recall that they are basically just fractions with polynomials in the de denominator and numerator. So rational inequalities are just like rational equations, only they have an inequality symbol in them. So that would be like x subtract 1 over x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. That would be an example of a rational inequality. To solve a rational inequality, we're going to use the test point method. And we saw the test point method when we were working with linear inequalities. And it might have seemed a little strange then, because with linear inequalities, we can just go about solving them. But with rational inequalities, it's actually really tricky to solve them by manipulating the expressions. So we're going to use the test point method. Uh, and you'll recall that we want to rearrange the inequality so that zero is on one side and that we have a rational equation on the other that's written as a single fraction. Right now we have that. That's exactly the kind of thing we're talking about in step two. The rational expression is one single fraction. And then on the other side of the inequality, we should have zero. Then what we do is we find the critical points that make the rational expression zero or undefined. Okay, and we're going to see this in an example, so it'll become more clear. Uh, but what that means is that x values that, for example, uh, are not allowed because they would make the denominator equal zero. That would be an example of a critical point because it makes the rational expression undefined. Finally, we're going to test points on either sides of the critical points to figure out where the inequality is true and where it's false in each region. The solution is where the different regions are true, and we'll combine multiple regions together if there's multiple regions that satisfy the inequality. Well, that's a lot of talk. Let's get to an example so you can see how this works in an example. In our first example, we're just going to go ahead and solve that inequality that I uh, uh, showed as an example of a rational inequality. And the first step to solve one of these is to rearrange it so that zero is on one side and the rational expression is on the other. And that that rational expression is written as a single fraction. Now, that's already done for us in this example, so that's great. So step one is already done. Step two, we're going to try to find the critical points that make the rational expression either equal to zero or undefined. So in our rational expression, we have x minus 1 over x plus 3. And we want to know where this is 0 or undefined. Well, let's start with where it's equal to 0. If we wanted to solve for where it's equal to 0, well, we could multiply both sides by x plus 3. And if we multiply each side by x plus 3, uh, obviously the x plus 3s go away because on the right hand side, 0 times x plus 3 is just 0. So I'd be left with x minus 1 equals 0, so x is equal to 1. Really, what you can see we did was we're just solving for where is the numerator equal to 0. Because if the numerator is equal to 0, well, 0 divided by anything is 0. So we're looking for where the numerator is equal to 0. And that's where x is equal to 1. So that's our first critical point. But there's a second critical point. Where is it undefined? Well, that would be where the denominator is equal to 0. The denom is equal to 0, because you're not allowed to divide by 0. So if x plus 3 is equal to 0, it will also be the location of another critical point. So that would be x is equal to negative 3. So now that we've got our critical points, we sketch a number line. We put our critical points on there, so negative 3 and 1. And now we test points uh, between these critical points. And we see, is the inequality true or not true? in those regions. So to start with, let's pick as our test point um, 
x equals uh, negative 4 to the left of negative 3. We'll pick x equals 0 in between them because that's a nice easy point to test. And on the right we can just use x equals 2. Try to keep the values small and uh, then we'll just go to it from there. So now we're going to test say uh, x equals negative 4 in the original inequality. So we test negative 4 minus 1 over negative 4 plus 3 and we check is it greater than or equal to 0. Well negative 4 minus 1 and negative 4 plus 3 leaves us with 5 is greater than or equal to 0. Is that true? It is. So uh, the region to the left of negative 3 satisfies this rational inequality. In the middle we're going to check 0. So uh, 0 minus 1 over 0 plus 3 greater than or equal to 0. So is negative 1 over 3 greater than or equal to 0? It is not. So that middle region is false. And then finally we'll check 2. So 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 3 greater than or equal to 0. So that would be uh, 1 over 5. That is greater than or equal to 0 because it's a positive value. So that region on the right is true as well. And we should also look at uh, our inequality because it's greater than or equal to 0. Uh, 1 would satisfy that because as we saw 1 makes the expression 0 x equals 1 makes the expression 0, and that was the whole point of solving that one particular critical point. So uh, that's going to be true over there. But x is not allowed to be equal to negative 3, so that's got to be an open dot there, because as we saw, negative 3 makes the expression undefined. That was the whole point of finding uh, that critical point. So we have these two regions uh, where x is to the left of negative 3 and it's to the right of positive 1. So we can write this as either or. Either or will make this uh, rational inequality true. So we will say that x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than or equal to 1. That would be one way to write this. Or we could also write it as uh, or I should say we, we could also write it using interval notation, so it would be negative infinity to negative 3, round bracket, union, which combines it with the other region, which square bracket 1 to infinity. That's a second way to write our solution. And actually, I should go back and check what we were asked in the question. We were asked to write it in interval notation, so this is the way we want to write it for the purpose of this question. In this next example, uh, we have a little more work to do before we can get to the uh, critical points and then testing those critical points. Because what we need is we need everything on one side of the equation, and uh, we also need it all as a single fraction. So we're going to have to use our rational equation or rational expression skills in this example. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 5 over 3x from each side. in order to have all, everything over on one side. So a third minus 2 over x squared minus 5 over 3x uh, is less than 0. And now I have to combine uh, everything into one fraction, which means giving it a common denominator. So the lowest common denominator that I need is going to be 3x squared. That's going to be the easiest way to get all of these uh, three expressions on with the same denominator. Which means multiplying this first one by x squared over x squared means multiplying the second one by 3 over 3 and the last one by x over x. So uh, 1 times x squared is just x squared. Uh, minus 2 times 3 is 6 and minus 5 times x. And then they're all over 3x squared. And all of that is less than 0. So uh, that wasn't so bad. 
now we're at the point where we can start looking for our critical points. Uh, but we need to be able to figure out where uh, the numerator is equal to zero to know where this expression is equal to zero. So I'm going to factor this numerator, which I can do with my factoring skills, but it means that I need to rearrange. So, so let's, let's actually uh, get ourselves up here, critical points, so that we know what we're doing. Uh, we sort of make our work uh, in a separate region. So let's start by uh, looking where um, where we find uh, where the expression is equal to zero. So that would be that the numerator is equal to zero. That would be one set of critical points. And the other set of critical points is where the denominator would be equal to zero. So this first, uh, when we're looking for where the numerator is equal to zero, we'll have to do a little rearranging so that we can uh, factor and solve our quadratic equation. This is a simple trinomial. So we can factor this with two values that add to negative 5 and multiply to negative 6. Uh, what are those values going to be? That would be x minus 6 and x plus 1 is equal to 0, which means we have x equals uh, negative 1 and x equals positive 6. Those are our solutions to that quadratic equation. Uh, meanwhile, over here in the light blue, what value of x solves this equation? Well, just x equals 0, because 0 squared is 0, so 3 times 0 is 0. x equals 0 is our solution to that quadratic equation. Or, yeah, that's a quadratic equation as well. Now we'll go ahead and uh, test these critical points. So I'll put my number line down here and put the three critical points on that number line. So we have negative one, we have zero, and we have x equals six, somewhere over here. And we want to test values in each of these regions. So we might as well pick x equals negative two between negative 1 and 0 is tricky. Uh, we have to make it as simple as possible for ourselves. So we'll just have to pick x equals negative 1 half. And uh, then between x equals 0 and 6, we will pick um, x equals 1 would be the easiest value I can think to test there. And past 6, uh, we might as well just pick x equals 7. So we have four test points. Because we have these three different regions, we have uh, uh, four, or, or sorry, we don't have three different regions, we have four different regions, so we have to pick four different test points. Now, the good news is the boundary of each of them is open because this is uh, our original inequality was just less than. So each of these boundaries is open. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put these in our calculator. And uh, you can do this when you're doing these problems for yourself. You're just going to check them in your calculator. You're going to check each of these tech test points. So I recommend you should always try to use the original inequality. Uh, but in this case, I think it's easier if we actually use the uh, rearranged inequality here, where we have less than zero because then we can just put everything into our calculator and see if that is less than zero or not. So that's my recommendation. Uh, it's, you know, it's best to use the original inequality, but that would mean doing two separate calculations, the left-hand side of the inequality, and then checking to see if that is less than the right-hand side of the inequality for that x value. But that just involves doing two calculations. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go this way over, over here and use this one so that I can check to see whether or not the x value of negative 2 makes the left-hand side of that inequality less than 0. And I'm just going to do that in my calculator. I'm not going to show you how I type it in or anything. This is something you just have to make sure you're comfortable using your calculator to, to do this sort of calculation. And we're going to get some weird decimal value, and that's OK. And we just check to see, is it positive or is it negative, and does it satisfy that inequality? So I've gone ahead and I've typed into my calculator one third minus two over uh, 
x equals negative 2 squared, then minus 5 over 3 times negative 2 squared. Or, or sorry, just negative 2. 3 times negative 2. And so I type that into my calculator, and I get, uh, on the left-hand side, I get 0 0.667 is less than 0. Because, uh, again, obviously it's less than 0 is the uh, uh, inequality I'm checking it against. And this is not true. So this region here is uh, not part of the solution. Now I'm going to do that for uh, x equals uh, a half to check this middle region. When I do that, I get negative 11 is less than 0. That would be correct. So that region is uh, part of the solution. Now I'll check x equals 1. And I get negative point three or negative three point three three repeating is less than zero, which is true. So there's another solution region. And then when I check x equals seven, I get zero point zero five four four and a bunch of other numbers is less than zero. And that's a positive decimal, so it is not true. So I have two solution regions between negative 1 and 0 uh, or between 0 and 6, but not including 0 because of this uh, original inequality, which was less than, which we talked about there. So to write those, uh, and we're asked to write it in interval notation, then we can write that the solution is between negative 1 and 0, and that's combined with the solution region between 0 and and 6. So there we go. We use test points to find uh, those two regions that where the x values will satisfy that rational inequality. So that was a long example, but I do want to show you uh, very briefly um, what the graph of what we just graphed was. So recall that uh, we rearranged our inequality so that we were solving this inequality, uh, a rational equation x minus 6 times x plus 1 over 3x squared is less than 0. Well, if we graph, and I just went to Desmos and I typed in y equals that rational expression, check out how it appears. And so y equals uh, is this blue line here on the graph y. And let's look at graphically where it dips below 0. And we can actually see where our solution came from. So it, it's positive in this whole region here for uh, negative values of x. And then it turns and dips below 0 right here at this point negative 1 comma 0. So between uh, x equals negative 1, and then it shoots down to very, very, very negative values as it approaches that critical point x equals 0. There's x equals 0, this line here. And so uh, the value of the function becomes very, very negative. And then on the other side, it obviously can't equal x equals 0 because that we are not allowed to divide by 0. Then on the other side of the uh, inequality, or sorry, on the other side of the critical point, the value of y uh, rises from very, very negative values until it hits this point, x equals 6. So you can see that our two regions uh, of the solution, uh, which is between negative 1 and 0, and 0 and 6, also uh, manifest here in the graph of that rational function. So this would be another alternate way to solve the rational equation is by examining the graph of the equation or the graph. Yeah, the graph of the equation, which would help us solve the inequality.